We are going to be ranking all 78 brawlers in the game for our April tier list. If I'm unsure with a brawler, I'm going to let the tier list play out and then fill it in later. I feel like that's going to help and make a more accurate tier list. First up, we have Angelo, and we know exactly where Angelo is going. Angelo, I think, is still the best brawler in the game by far, and it easily deserves the S tier. Don't need to say that much. You guys know how good Angelo is. To fill out the S tier a little bit, I'm also going to put Charlie up there. Now, Charlie, similarly to Angelo, is one of the most well-rounded brawlers in the game. She is super good, and her spider's gadget, similar to Tara Pets, are just really annoying and difficult to take out. That gadget definitely needs a nerf, and maybe if it went from three spiders to two, or maybe half the HP, you would see Charlie go into the A tier, or maybe even B, but as of now, she is definitely an S tier brawler. Next up, we have Amber, and Amber is really good in a lot of different modes, especially Hot Zone, where you have to just sit in a zone and kind of just collect time in there. Amber is the ultimate damage dealer, where she does damage to everyone there. The fire is really annoying. Just everything about Amber is really annoying. We're going to put Amber in the A tier. She is a very, very good brawler next up we'll do barley and barley just isn't that good right now you can use him in heist and kind of in like gem but that's really it it's a very weak brawler but we're gonna keep it out of f tier and leave it in c for now but i might be changing that up next up we have 8-bit and 8-bit you know pretty average brawler good on about half the maps about half the modes does a lot of damage and does help teammates with that damage boost so we're gonna put 8-bit in the b tier a lot of good range a lot of good damage a lot of good stuff about 8-bit but the fact that he is so slow does make him an easy target for a lot of different brawlers next up we have ash and ash we are gonna put in the b tier ash did get a slight buff which was needed but i still think you need to be a good ash player to actually make him work so we're just going to keep him in the B tier for now. Next up, we have Bell, and we are going to put Bell in the S tier. The S tier is really easy to fill out because, I mean, if a brawler is broken, let's put it there. Uh, Bell is very strong. She was the most or second most picked brawler in, I think, all four regions monthly finals. So that should say a lot about how versatile and how good Bell is. Obviously, she does have counters such as Piper, such as... You know, other things, but Bell is very good, very safe, easily one of the best brawlers in the game. Next up, we have B, and we are going to put B in the B tier. So funny, I know. But yeah, B just doesn't have what Piper or Bell or Brock has. I mean, all those brawlers kind of have their own niche when it comes to range brawlers. Brock does a lot of damage. Piper can two-tap just about anyone. Bell's got the hypercharge, the mark. Even Nani has the return to sender, teleport, big shots, but... B kind of seems like it really has nothing right now. A slight B buff, though, will make it really strong. So we're going to see what happens when it gets a buff. I swear I didn't do this on purpose, but after B, we now have BB. And BB's actually gotten a lot better. If you're facing brawlers such as Brock or, you know, just single fire brawlers that don't do a lot of damage, BB is a free win. So if you are in a draft setting and you have a last pick, you see someone have a Brock or a Carl or something like that, maybe even a Byron where you have to hit a lot of shots, Take the BB. It's going to be a really good pick, and it's going to be almost impossible to take out. The hypercharge as well helped it a ton, so definitely make sure you have that if you're playing BB. Next up, we have Bo, and we are also going to put Bo in the A tier. Bo has just been really good for a really long time. Me personally, I suck at dodging the mines. I've hit 121 Bo mines, and it is April 5th. And for every Bo mine I hit, I'm donating a dollar to charity. So I'm trying to help out where I can. But Bo, it's just, I don't know, such an annoying brawler. So difficult to deal with. So well-rounded. Definitely an A-tier brawler. Next up, we have Bonnie. And Bonnie did actually get a lot better. The fact that if you have the epic gear, you can get your super in three shots is absolutely insane. Now, I want to put Bonnie in A-tier. And you guys absolutely cooked me last time when I put her in F. But I'm going to have to put it in the B tier. Bonnie still has that weakness where if you don't have that epic gear, where if you don't have plus one gear, you're still kind of slow 99% of the time and just walking around and kind of a supercharger. It's single fire. So I want you guys to understand if there is a BB running out of Bonnie, for example, there is nothing that Bonnie can do. You just have to shoot, shoot, shoot. And that BB is just not going to die. Now, yes, in the small form, can you kill a BB 100%? But then you have a lot of other weaknesses. I'm really interested to see what a Bonnie hypercharge would do and how it's going to affect the brawler. I think it's going to make the brawler really, really good. But for now, we're just going to have to wait and see. Next up, we have Brock. And I know Brock needs some love. I know Brock is a good brawler, but we are going to put Brock in the 
the top of the C tier. You know, I feel like it's kind of on the same level as B. So instead of moving Brock up, I'm actually going to move B down to the C tier. You know, Brock is good in heist, does a lot of damage. But besides that, Brock isn't really that good anywhere. It gets countered by other ranged brawlers, gets countered by tanks, gets countered by throwers, unless you break open the map, which you can do with Brock. There's just not, you know, too many things you can do with Brock that stops you from getting countered. And that is unfortunately the bad part about Brock. I love this brawler. He is so good, but he just is way too easy to beat. So it's going to be C tier for today. Next up, we have Bull. And Bull is a very, very, very good brawler. Pika, please do not kill me, but we're going to put Bull at the top of the B tier. Now, when I say very good, I mean for like Bull's standards. Bull is usually really clunky, isn't really good outside of a couple heist maps, and that's really it. But now you can use Bull in Hot Zone, you can use Bull in Brawl Ball. It's like kind of versatile, even in Gem Grab now. Now again, you're kind of pushing it, playing it anywhere but Heist, unless your name is Pika, or unless you're a very skilled Bull player. But for now, it's going to stay in the B tier. Next up, we have Buster, and this is a really weird one. Because in the pro scene, Buster is seen as one of the best brawlers in the game. Now he's not overpowered at anything, but the shield, the passive super, the pull, the HP, there's just a lot of really good things about Buster, and it doesn't get countered very easily. But I have to remember that this is not a competitive tier list, this is just a normal ladder or rank tier list. So we're going to put Buster at the top of the B tier, but if you are higher level and you are playing in, you know, Legendary, Mythic, Diamond, Masters Lobbies, or really high in trophies, I would say Buster is easily an A tier brawler. Next up, we have Buzz, and the Buzz Hypercharge was amazing. Buzz was literally the best brawler in the game for about one day, or maybe even not a day. I, don't, I forgot if they nerfed it before it got into the actual game, if it was only in the dev build, but Buzz was crazy until the nerf. The gadget plus hypercharge combo is still really good but that's really all that got buffed about buzz so we're gonna put buzz in the b tier the b tier is getting a little bit crowded so hopefully we can change things up but for now b tier for buzz 100 next up we have byron and although byron just recently got a buff and i feel like i'm gonna get a lot of hate for this he's still a little bit underwhelming i don't know i want to put him in the c tier but i also don't want you guys to hate me so i'm very conflicted right now but i honestly think i'm gonna put him in the c tier now again, the buff is good. The buff did make Byron viable. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying he's unplayable. That's for the F tier. But just like Brock, Byron does have a lot of counters, just like B and Barley. There are a lot of counters. There are a lot of ways to beat Byron, and you do have to hit a lot of shots. So for now, he's going to stay in the C tier, but I expect him to move up soon. Please don't hate me, guys. Next up, we have Carl, and Carl recently got a buff, and he's kind of back in the meta again. We're going to put him in the B tier because I feel like in draft setting, you need to last pick Carl, and I feel like on ladder, you get countered really easily. For example, by Bull, by Buster, by Buzz, by BB, there, are, by Charlie. There are a lot of really good counters, but he's still really good. If you look at the brawlers on the lower end of this list, like Ash, like 8-Bit, like Bonnie, like Barley, like B, Byron, and Brock, Carl counters them. So it's pretty obvious what brawlers are good and what brawlers are bad right now. And Carl kind of just fits right in the middle of that. Next up, we have Chester. And you guys are going to kill me. I know it. There are a lot of weird Chester fans. But Chester is going to the F tier. He's just not good. He's just not good right now. I don't hate Chester. Not at all. But he's just not good right now. So he's going to be F tier. Next up, we have the train, aka Chuck. Chuck is super annoying in Heist. And that is about it. So we're going to put Chuck in the C tier. I do kind of wish Chuck is reworked a little bit to where he's not so dependent on his posts. And you can play him in more modes other than Heist. But he's a very unique brawler, and if they don't want to change the way he works, I understand that. Next up, we have Colette, and it feels like Colette kind of fell off a little bit. If you want to know why, it's because all these tanks, you know, they aren't very strong. The strong brawlers right now are kind of like mid-range to range, as you guys can see from the top of our tier list so far. And I want to put Colette in A. To be honest, I will, but you can easily argue that she can be in the B tier. The hypercharge is still really strong in heist, and she still does amazing into tanks. The gadget where you heal off of hitting shots is also really useful. So really good kit that she has. It just feels a little bit weak after that supercharge nerf. So we're going to leave her at the A tier for now. Next up, we have Colt. And we're going to put Colt in the A tier. Colt is actually really good. He's been played a lot in monthly finals, not just in heist. And he's kind of well-rounded now. If you play Colt on ladder, brawl ball, heist, even bounty, really, really good now. Can work in other modes. So if you can hit your shots, play Colt. But only if you have the hypercharge, it's going to be A tier for now. Next up, we have Cordelius. And honestly, I did not see this coming when the hypercharge just dropped because I thought the hypercharge was not going to help because Cord is so good in the realm and wasn't really good everywhere else. 
But now what the hypercharge does is it makes Cord really good in the realm still after the nerf where you can't jump. So we're honestly going to put Cord in the S tier. Now, obviously, it's not as strong as the other brawlers, but every single tank is super hard countered by Cord. A lot of mid ranges are super hard countered by Cord, and it's just such a well rounded brawler in a weird way when i say well-rounded i just want to clarify i don't mean into everything but cord is kind of weird where even if you're countered by throwers or countered by a brawler you are going to eventually get it into the realm and get a kill or you can take the teammate into the realm and get a kill it's really weird just trust me guys cord is really good next up we have crow lex sorry still sucks putting crow in the c tier but at the top of the c tier i'll be fair the hypercharge buff did make it a little bit more viable, but still Crow is not very good right now. Next up, we have Daryl, and similarly to Chester, Daryl's going to the F tier. No reason to play Daryl over any other tank. It's sad. I love Daryl, but it just is how it is. Next up, we have Doug, and Doug did get a little bit better. It actually got a lot better, and then they fixed it, and he became bad again. So we're going to put Doug in the C tier. Doug's usable now in like high HP weird comps or as a tank counter, but that's about it, and I wouldn't really play him anywhere besides Brawl Ball. Next up, we have Dinah, and Dinah is probably the best thrower in the game right now. So we're going to put him in the A tier. Dinah, very strong, a lot of damage, counters a lot of mid-range brawlers if you have walls. It's just really good. Similarly to Colt, if you can hit shots, play Dinah. The hypercharge helps. If you can't, probably wouldn't. Next up, we have Edgar, and Edgar is actually pretty good. He definitely got a lot better because of his hypercharge. He did fall off a little bit because it got nerfed. But Edgar is still a very quality brawler. I would say he is probably the best assassin along with Buzz. So we're going to put Edgar right beside Buzz in the B tier. And I think that's where he belongs. Next up, we have El Primo. And El Primo's hypercharge unfortunately kind of sucks. And the fact that they took away buffs where you get additional speed, damage, and shield kind of takes a lot away from Primo. It is probably going to end up being the worst hypercharge brawler on the list. I'm not 100% sure, but we are going to put him in the C tier for today. Next up, we have Ems, and I feel like Ems is slowly making her way back up the meta. She is actually a very good damage dealer, but it's kind of weird where she doesn't have a hypercharge. She doesn't have an insane play like Tara or Jean, and no hypercharges makes it kind of underwhelming. Now, with that said, I feel like Ems is a little bit better than the brawlers in the C tier, but I'm going to still put her in the C tier. Next up, we have Eve, and Eve is a pretty interesting brawler because Broken literally walk on water, but he can't do much damage, does not have a hypercharge, and is really bad against range. So, just like Ems, we're going to put Eve in the C tier. I'm trying to be as hard as possible on these brawlers. Again, Eve is workable. You know, you can, that's not a word, but you can make him work. Um, but on our list, we're going to stay tough with it. He's going to be C tier. Next up, we have Fang. And Fang, similarly to Edgar, fell off in the rankings. The hypercharge got a big nerf, and you don't really see that much Fang anymore. Now, Fang's hypercharge, when you have it, yeah, it is really, really good. But that is about the only good thing with Fang. So, because of that, we are going to put him at the top of the B tier, but no A tier for Fang today. Next up, we have Frank. Guys, Frank sucks. Frank literally runs the gang. Mr. Frank Supercell, please, buff your own brawler. He needs one. Next up, we have Gale, and Gale, again, slowly making his way back into the meta. The old man is creeping his way back, and we're going to put him in the B tier. Now, Gale is really good on Brawl Ball and Gem Grab, Hot Zone as well, so you can definitely make him work in a lot of different, you know, areas and different modes. When Gale gets his Hypercharge, I think he's going to be a very, very good Brawler, so let's wait until that. For now, B tier. Next up, we have Gene, and this is Mr. All Reliable. You know, the heals, the extra range for the pull, there's so much to love about Gene. He's the ultimate Vision Gear machine. If you guys are playing with modifiers, there are a lot of mods where Gene's also insane. Now, this has nothing to do with modifiers in our tier list, just kind of things I'm letting you guys know. But I do love how well-rounded Gene is, so although this might be a little bit biased, I'm going to put him at the bottom of the A tier. Now, he probably is on the same level of, as brawlers such as Fang, Buster, Buzz, 8-Bit, etc. But I just like the flexibility of Gene where you can play him on Brawl Ball, Gem, Hot Zone, Knockout, Bounty... And probably something else that I'm not even remembering right now. Next up, we have Gray. And Gray is a really good brawler, but I know a lot of you guys play with randoms. You guys play solo. And Gray is horrible solo. You need good team synergy and you need the correct comp. So if you can play something like Gray, Charlie, and Buster, for example, that is an amazing comp. But if you're just queuing up with randoms, Gray is going to suck. So because of that, we are going to put my bro in the C tier. Next up, we have Griff, and Griff is a heavy damage dealer, and he's actually gotten a lot better as the meta has moved on. If you guys look at a lot of these 
upper half brawlers, they're mostly tanks and mid ranges, and Griff does amazing into both of those. So because of that, Griff is going to go at the top of the B tier, but again, he's not strong enough to get into that A tier, S tier category. On second thought, now that I'm looking this over, I can't put Griff in B and Gene in A, so I'm gonna also put Griff or Gene in the B tier. Next up, we have Grom. Grom is one of the weaker throwers because he's so easy to counter. On Heist, Grom is a menace. On Knockout, Grom is a menace. Bounty, he's okay. But besides that, he is totally unplayable. So I'm going to put him into the C tier for now. But I do expect big things for Grom as his super is amazing. His gadgets are good. So it, I think it's no time until he comes in the meta. Next up, we have Gus. And Gus got a little bit better because of a recent buff. But still nothing good enough. So we're going to put Gus in the C tier. And we're just going to leave him there. Just doesn't have much to his name. He's a support brawler. But the shield isn't all that good right now. The ghosts are okay. But... Nothing really too much going on with Gus, so we're going to keep him in the C tier. Next up, we have Hank and Spen. I am so sorry, Spen. I know you love Hank's milk. I know there is so much to love about Hank, but we are going to keep him in the F tier. He is not good. The fish is horrible, and it's going to stay that way until he gets a buff. Now, when he gets a slight buff, I'm telling you, the fish is going to be broken. I'm not a fish hater, guys, but as of now, he's just not good enough. F tier for now. Next up, we have Jackie, and Jackie is the ultimate tank. If you face any of the tanks on our list, maybe outside of Doug, you know what tank beats them all? Jackie. So because of that, we're going to put her in the A tier. She also works really well with brawlers like Max, Gray, you know, all these support brawlers, Gus, to name a couple. And the speed actually helps a lot when it comes to reaching those mid-range brawlers like Amber, Nita, Sandy, and getting in range to do your lethal attacks. The hypercharge is really good. There's a lot to love about Jackie. Next up, we have Janet. And just like a lot of these brawlers on the C tier, just underwhelming range to mid-range brawler. Just doesn't do enough. Just like Gus, Eve, Gray, you know, just not enough damage being done by Janet. Not enough with her kit. But she is one of the most well-rounded brawlers in the game. If you guys remember, about a year and a bit ago, Janet and Penny were literally the two best brawlers in the game because when their stats are good, they are well-rounded enough to be the best brawlers in the game. But unfortunately, she's just been nerfed recently, so she's going to stay near the bottom. But believe me, Janet will be back at the top in no time. It's just a matter of one or two buffs. Next up, we have Jesse, and Jesse's turret is insane with the hypercharge. Even without it, the turret is insane. Jesse is one of the best brawlers in the game. I kind of want to put her in the S here because she's so well-rounded, so good. But she does have a couple weaknesses, so we're going to put her at A. Jesse's weaknesses are range and throwers, which are inevitable. You are going to face that 100%. So because of that, she's unfortunately going to be A tier. She has nothing to help her with that, but she is very, very good. One of the best brawlers in the game. Next up, we have the cat, and the cat is just not good. I want to put the cat in F tier, but it does have some good pros, especially in knockout where you can be sneaky, jump on people's back, heal, go and viz. There's, there's, there's just so many things. So Kat is going to go at the very, 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 very bottom of C tier. Not a great brawler, but you can definitely make it work. Next up, we have Larry. Now, Larry is a really interesting one because Larry's fall from grace was quite interesting. As you guys remember, Larry was easily the best brawler in the game and potentially the best brawler even of all time. It took maybe, what, 10 nerfs? But now Larry's fall from grace is nice, and I would say he's about an A tier brawler, same level as Dynamite. There isn't really a glaring weakness with Larry. So although, you know, he's just not as good anymore. It's not like a thrower claps him. It's not like a tank claps him, a mid-range. He's just not as strong and that's okay. He's a well-rounded brawler and I'm perfectly fine with how Larry is right now. Next up, we have Leon and Leon got a big nerf. Now it doesn't seem like a big nerf, but it actually was a big nerf. The proximity damage. So the further you are away, the less damage you're going to do in relation to last update. I don't know. It's kind of weird because we don't have exact numbers for Leon, but it does feel like a very significant nerf. For now, I'm going to leave Leon in the A tier because I think it's a little bit too early to tell. But I actually think Leon is more of a B tier brawler right now. I'm just giving it some credit, some kudos because he's been so good for so long. Next up, we have Lola and Lola surprisingly is going to sneak her way into the B tier. Now, just like the C tier brawler, she does seem a little bit underwhelming. But she's actually really good at countering a lot of these meta brawlers, especially when she puts her clone down and she deals a massive amount of damage. So we are going to put her into the B tier. She's also very well-rounded and you can play her in a lot of different modes. Next up, we have Lou and Lou has an insane hypercharge and that's about it. So Lou hasn't been played in a long time in scrims, in meta, in competitive. There's just a lot going on that isn't really that good with Leon or with Lou. Sorry right now. Lou is really good in hot zone. Lou is really good in brawl ball playable in gem that is it 
Lou used to be S tier. Now we are going to put him at the very bottom of our B tier. Next up, we have Macy. And guys, honestly, maybe I take back my hypercharge comment about Primo because Macy might just be the worst hypercharge brawler in the game. The switch from three shots to super to four completely killed Macy, and she is just not good anymore. We are going to put her in the C tier. Hopefully, she gets a little buff soon. Next up, we have Mandy, and Mandy's kind of like the ultimate sniper, you know, the long range. I enjoyed playing her at Worlds, but she is just not good. You can play her in Knockout, play her on a couple heist maps, and you can play her in Bounty. But even then, she's not good against throwers. You have to stay very far away back. And if you don't have the lead, it's very hard to play Mandy. So we are going to put her into the C tier. Next up, we have Max. And Max is like the ultimate support brawler. Hand in hand with Poco. One gives heals. One gives speed. Both are the best at what they do. And because of that, I'm going to put Max in the B tier. You can play Max in a bunch of different modes. It synergizes well with all the brawlers in the game, basically, outside of throwers and half of the range brawlers. So... Maybe not the best brawler singularly, but when you play it, you're playing it in a team environment and you're going to elevate your brawlers. So she is going to go in the B tier. Next up, we have Meg and Meg is a really good brawler in the competitive scene, but I don't know exactly how good she is going to be on ladder. Now, it's pretty easy wins on ladder, but in competitive, what she's mainly used for is for countering range. So something like a bell mark or a Nani shot or a Piper curve can easily be blocked by Meg's gadget meg also takes a ton of damage until she gets into her little form and then also has her little form so meg is really good honestly i'm gonna put meg in the a tier i think she's well-rounded enough i think you can play her in enough modes let me know what you guys think about meg in specific because i'm pretty curious next up we have melody and melody is actually not as good as you guys think like yeah melody's fun yeah you can do crazy stuff with melody but she's kind of limited and she's not that good against range you definitely can't play her in knockout and bounty but with all that being said i'm really nitpicking Brawl Ball, Gem, Hot Zone, you name it. Heist as well. Melody is a force. And we're going to put her at the very bottom of our S tier. Next up, we have Miko. And Miko is kind of just trash Edgar in a way. I mean, yeah, you can go crazy with Miko some games, but most games you can't. You're, Miko's the type of brawler where you carry one game and you go like 9-1. and one, and You're like, oh my god, look at me. I'm the best brawler. And then you go 0-3 oh your next two games and blame your teammates. Like, no, it's not your teammates' fault. Miko's just not really that brawler. It's only if you have a perfect setup can you really go Miko. So because of that, we're going to put my boy in the C tier. Still a really fun brawler to play though and hope he gets a buff. Next up, we have Mortis. Guys, Mortis still not very good right now. I really want to put him in the C tier, but he can make some stuff happen to be honest. So we're going to put Mortis in the B tier, but it's still kind of a troll pick. It just seems like an interesting brawler where if you can dash fast and you're good at Mortis, yeah, you can make him work. If you don't dash fast and you can't make Mortis work, he's an F tier brawler. It's really personal preference for me. I'm just going to put it in the B tier. Next up, we have Mr. P. And honestly, guys, Mr. P sucks right now. Mr. P is not very good. And because of that, we're going to put him at the top of the F tier. Now, yeah, Mr. P is more viable than everyone in the F tier. But he's just so underwhelming. And it's only really good if your penguins annoy people. And at this time, you know, penguins aren't really annoying anyone. Next up, we have Nani, and Nani's kind of like the ultimate range brawler at the moment. The return to sender, the teleport, the long range, the high damage. There's just so much to love about Nani. So we're going to put Nani in the A tier. Very well deserved. I hate this brawler, but it's good. So what can I say? Next up, we have Piper, and I am so biased to Piper. But if I'm going to be honest, guys, she fell off. She got a 200 health nerf, which feels like nothing and sounds like nothing. I get it. And I don't want to over-exaggerate. If anything, I said everyone else around me was over-exaggerating. Of course, Piper will still work. You don't get hit. 200 HP does not matter. But what I've come to realize is 200 HP really matters for Piper. She is so squishy. She feels like she dies to anything. And I feel like you kind of need a perfect Piper game right now to make her work. We're still going to give her the benefit of the doubt and put her in the A tier. But I actually don't think she's really good right now. And... Let me use this next brawler to explain why. Next up, we have RT, and we're going to put RT in the A tier. So I'm going to put her one spot ahead of Piper, and you guys might ask why. Both take two shots and a gadget now. RT gadget, you physically cannot miss. Obviously, the curve is hard to miss, but you can miss it. And RT shots are also easier to hit than Piper shots. But if they're even, why is RT better? Well, RT is better because RT marks for your entire team, if anything, Hits that RT mark, it's an instant 1,000 damage. So there's tons of damage being done with RT, probably a little bit more than Piper. And then on top of that, RT is better into tanks and stuff than Piper is right now because of that high damage, because of that mark. Next up, we have Nita. And if you guys are low in trophies, I'm not saying this to be hurtful or attacking, but please, if you guys are low in trophies, do not judge me for this. But the lower you are in trophies, the easier Nita is, similarly to Jesse. 
The higher up you go, Nita sucks. It is so hard to get a Nita bear, and it is so hard for it to be a useful Nita bear in high level matches. I'm not talking about competitive. I'm talking just high ladder. You guys understand. If you don't have a Nita bear, you're pretty useless. If you guys do have a Nita bear, you're good, but it's definitely not A tier. We're going to put Nita in the B tier. Hopefully, you guys are okay with that. Next up, we have Otis, and Otis is a mid range brawler that does a lot of damage. So, what can you not love about it? He has a gadget, which is really easy to hit. That you can auto aim and he also has a super that mutes people and can't shoot you back everything to love about otis perfect mid-range brawler and i'm gonna put him right beside nita in the b tier you know what i almost just called the b tier the mid tier by accident and honestly i'm just gonna roll with it pam is going in the mid tier she is really good in hot zone where you can put a turret down and just sit in it she's really good in gem same situation but outside of that not very good so i'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt that when you need high hp and just camping she's probably the best brawler in the game outside of that though useless not good anywhere mid tier it is another really good brawler that kind of just fell off recently we're gonna put pearl in the a tier but something i really don't like about pearl is you have to like not shoot for the brawler to be good now i know that sounds kind of dumb to say because obviously pearl can win but you're kind of reliant on your teammates you're reliant on the comps and it feels like when pearl is cooked up and you have position it's unstoppable but when you don't have position with pearl i mean what are you supposed to do i feel like the a tier is a little bit generous but we're just gonna leave pearl at the bottom of the a tier for now next up we have penny and i mean just look at the brawlers on my tier list you guys know what penny is you guys know where penny's going doesn't do enough damage doesn't do enough anything the mortar is okay but that's really it penny is definitely gonna be c tier next up we have poco and honestly just like max poco is the best support brawler for heals instead of speed but the heals are so important right now hp is so important right now and because of that i'm gonna put poco in the a tier poco is definitely the best support brawler in the game right now and i don't know not too much to be said for poco amazing healer amazing in a lot of different modes not good in like bounty and knockout but good everywhere else so i would definitely recommend playing a lot of poco right now next up we have rico and that rico bouncy gadget not the one that heals the one that just like sprays out is the dumbest gadget in the game right now the fact that you can just be in a horrible situation or a buzz can grapple on you and you just click your green button and then a bunch of bullets just explode from inside of you like how like why why is that a thing for rico it makes no sense because rico's weakness is supposed to be when brawlers come up close to it so because of this we're gonna put rico at the very top of the a tier but i'm asking supercell to nerf this brawler hopefully they do next up we have rosa and rosa kind of fell off a little bit but is a pretty good tank and has that hypercharge. So we're going to put Rosa at the top of the B tier. She used to be like S or A, so she's just slowly falling off. But that's okay. Rosa's still a very good brawler and still very viable in everything besides Knockout and Bounty. Next up, we have Ruffs. And Ruffs is one of my favorite support brawlers in the game. But unfortunately, he is not good unless you're playing with a team and you have an exact strategy. So because of that, I'm going to put my boy in the C tier. But he does not deserve it. I hope he gets out one day. Next up, we have Sam, and Sam is like a walking supercharger. He's like a portable super. It's really weird, but he's really good. He takes a lot of attention, and I slowly see Sam getting back in the meta. So Sam is going to go in the bottom-ish of the B tier, but Sam has gotten a lot better. That gadget where you pull people in is very important. So if you guys want to play Sam, make sure you guys are using that gadget. Next up, we have Sandy, and you guys know Sandy. Sandy's insane. The gadget's insane. The super's insane. Nothing to, lo or nothing to hate, sorry, about Sandy. So we're going to put Sandy in the A tier. Again, amazing in all the modes besides Knockout and Bounty, which you guys I know heard a lot. But that's just what happens with a lot of these brawlers. Sandy's insane. Going to be at the top probably forever. Next up, we have Shelly. And Shelly is an interesting brawler. Because if there's nothing that counters Shelly, you just can't lose. You just auto-aim. Green button. Auto-aim. Yellow button. Auto-aim. Like, it's just so easy with Shelly. But then there are brawlers like Charlie, like Nita, like Max, like there's Jesse. There's a lot of brawlers that make it kind of unplayable for Shelly. So it's really matchup dependent. It's kind of like the Mortis where you can put Shelly kind of up and down on this tier list. Some people would put their Mortis A, some would put it F, some would put their Shelly A, some would put it F. I'm going to put Shelly in the B tier to be fair. I think she's a pretty good brawler. Next up, we have Spike and Spike is one of the best brawlers in the game. Spike is like lower S tier, upper A tier. But because we don't have that many S tier brawlers, I'm going to put Spike in S. He's just like the ultimate tank counter, kind of like Cord, where every single tank just like no shot against Spike. There's nothing you can do, maybe outside of Carl, but Carl's more of an assassin anyways. High damage, really good on a lot of different modes, just amazing brawler, not too much to say about Spike. Next up, we have Sprout, and I hate Sprout, but Sprout is pretty good right now. 
very good actually in hot zone as well as knockout and bounty which is kind of rare that you see a brawler that's really good in knockout and bounty also excel in other modes can also be played as a last pick if you're doing draft format in brawl ball in gem even in heist you can make it work on a map or two so because of that we're gonna put sprout in a tier but i'm not happy putting my boy there Next up, we have Squeak, and similarly to every single Brawler in C tier, not enough damage, have to hit every shot, well-rounded-ish, but needs a buff. Basically, if you look at my C tier, it's just really well-rounded Brawlers that can be good. Well, they're not all well-rounded, there's like Brock and Grom and stuff, whatever, but it's Brawlers that can be good, but just need buffs. Need a little bit of stat buffs, HP buffs, something like that, and it's gonna find its way back into meta. Next up, we have Stu, and Stu is one of the best Brawlers in the game. Has been one of the best brawlers in the game. I am so scared for Stu Hypercharge. Like, you guys have no idea how scared I am for Stu Hypercharge. But it's not in the game yet. So, Stu is going to go in the bottom of the A tier. But once that Hypercharge is the game, oh my god, expect it to be the top of S. Next up, we have Surge. And Surge is decent. My brother loves Surge. My brother's got like 30,000 trophies. So, I'm sure if you guys have 30,000 trophies, you guys probably like Surge too. But... Surge is going to stay in the C tier because he is not good in high level. He is not good against basically every brawler in S or A. And he's just not strong enough at all right now. Three brawlers left. For some reason, two of them are throwers. But we're not covering any of them right now. We are covering Tara. And Tara is going to sneak her way in the bottom of B tier. That is only because of her super and gadgets. Which I guess is like half her build. So I don't know why I said only. But she is so hard carried by those two things. Like the fact you can spam pets and the fact that your super can just win you the game is insane. But Tara has so many weaknesses, has very little range. It's, she's just so hard. She is so difficult to play. Next up, we have Tick and Tick has kind of fallen off. Tick is only really good at really high level where things are really organized. So I'm going to put Tick in the C tier and I'm not going to take too much of your time for this. Willow, same thing. C tier. These throwers aren't very good right now. I'd say Tick is a little bit better in Knockout and Bounty, and Willow's a little bit better in like Brawl Ball or Gem Grab. But that is going to be it for my tier list. So if you guys enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section below. If you guys hated it, let me know in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys would change around. Obviously, there's no such thing as a perfect tier list, 